Hi guys, Pete the Wargamer here, back with another Flames of War painting tutorial. In this video, we'll be using the Vallejo range of paints to tackle some US paratroopers in their M42 uniforms, making use of the new flexible plastic paratroopers kit released as part of the D-Day American range. Now before we start, when you're working with flexible plastic, it's useful to know that any tabs or mold lines on your miniatures need to be cut away with a knife, rather than being scraped away with a blade or a smoothed over with a file. A sharp knife is particularly helpful here, but do take care not to cut yourself when working in such a small area. With our models prepped, we can now begin the painting. First of all, you'll need to apply a primer so that the later layers of paint adhere to the miniature surface. It doesn't matter too much which colour you go for, but I've opted to use a mixture of Vallejo's grey and black airbrush primers to help paint the various mid-tones of the miniature. You'll also note that I'm painting my paratroopers in a batch of three models, which will be grouped together onto a single base. To make holding the small miniatures easier, I have attached them to a lollipop stick with a small bit of superglue. The first area that I'll be painting is the paratrooper's jacket and trousers, and for this, we'll be starting off with a base coat of khaki. As with all the base coats that I'll be painting in this video, you want to mix this paint with some water in roughly equal quantities to make the paint easy to work with. Apply your first layer, then allow it to paint to dry, before applying a second over the top. This layering technique will give a much smoother finish whilst avoiding the possibility of obscuring details by applying the paint too thickly. To give the webbing that light khaki colour, I'll be using some stone grey. Take care with this step as the webbing straps are quite thin. You can also use this paint to tackle the helmet straps and the Thompson sling too. To give the wood of the weapons and tools, as well as the leather of the boots and the chin strap, a rich reddish brown colour, I'll be base coating these areas using some flat brown. Next, we will want to tackle both the bare skin of the face and the hands. Again, these areas are quite small, so take your time and use an appropriately sized brush. For the helmet and any grenades your paratrooper may be carrying, apply a base coat of olive drab. To create the appearance of blackened steel, we want to start off by painting the metal areas of the weapons and any other areas using the dark grey of German grey. By using a grey paint here rather than a black, we'll be able to take advantage of the dark wash in the next couple of steps. With all of the base coats complete, we can now start to apply some washes. These are great for boosting the visibility of details as they will flow into the recessed areas and create the appearance of shadows. The first wash that we'll be applying in this way is sepia wash, but straight out of the pot it will be a little too strong, so we first need to water it down a little. Mix water into your wash until you have a consistency similar to what you see here. With your wash thinned, we next want to apply it across any brown, flesh, green and tan areas of the model. Sepia wash is much more subtle and will not darken down those lighter colour areas as much as a black wash would. Once dried, you will find that those small details will stand out much more than they did before. Perfect for small scale miniatures such as these. The next wash to apply is black wash, thinned in the same manner as before. This time we'll be applying it over the German grey that we painted onto the weapons. Once the washes have dried, we now want to add some highlights to help improve the level of detail. To do this, lightly drag the tip of a thin brush along the raised edges. This will create a small line of lighter paint along these edges, helping to improve both depth and definition. Thinning down the paint with just a little water should make this task easier, as the flow of the paint should be much smoother than if you'd used it straight from the bottle. To pick out the edges of the reddish brown areas, such as the boots and wooden areas, use some beige brown. Next, we'll be using some flat flesh to add a little more definition to the facial features and the fingers. Again, these details are very small, so use a brush with a fine point. For the helmet, I will once again be using some khaki to pick out some of the green strips of cloth on the helmet. The final step is to add some metallic highlights to the areas that we painted with German grey. We'll be using some oily metal and adding a small amount of the silvery paint to the edges of the metal areas. Combined with the dark grey base coat, the resulting effect will be of blackened steel. And here we have the completed US paratroopers which were attached to their base before I added some textured paint and some grass. For this tutorial, I took a lot of inspiration from the Colors of War book recently released to accompany Flames of War. It provides in-depth paint guides that cover an extensive range of World War II and Cold War era infantry and vehicles from multiple nations, eras and theatres. It's definitely worth checking out and is a great reference point for modern history wargamers. You can find a full list of all the paints used in this tutorial in the description below along with any other equipment that I've used to create this video. If you enjoyed this video, please do let me know in the comments below and be sure to subscribe to be kept up to date with all of my latest videos. And so, the only thing left to say is, thanks for watching and goodbye.